purpose of right to work anywhere it's been passed, anywhere it's been proposed, is basically the main purpose is to uh, diminish the influence of the unions, period. That is the main objective of right to work legislation. Based on that premise and, you know, creating jobs, you know, I did my homework on this, uh, you know, incomes increasing, uh, you know, it's it, it's all information that's distorted. You know, when they say that uh, uh, incomes increase, they always use percentages. Well, when you're starting from minimum wage, uh, if you're in the state, in the United States, the minimum wage goes up uh, uh, 10%. Uh, your wages increase 10%. But when you're in a state that is not right to work and is based on a higher, you know, very few people working at the minimum wage standards because of collective bargaining and other other uh, respects, it's going to distort. The, the percentage is going to be a lot lower. But right. when you look at the bottom line, uh, people in right to and non right to work states do a whole lot better than people in right to work states. Period. Well, I think when you get to the crux, and this was a question that Lisa called in here very innocently today, as Brian Bosman's coming on, she says, "Is there any, is there any uh, really good proof that right to work gets more people jobs?" I think that's, you know, and, and you look at the studies that, uh, you know, the Ball State University studies have been referenced. There's also been a study by uh, Notre Dame in 2011. It goes more in depth. Uh, their conclusion that right to work is a bad thing. I mean, uh, it may be biased going in, you know, but a lot, of, a lot of the information we're getting is, you know, slanted for the sake of discussion. But numbers don't lie, you know. Uh, uh, when you take the median income thing where they propose, and, and I brought some material here because I don't want to uh, misstate my case here. Uh, but the median incomes was part of the, uh, the part of both studies. And, you know, I guess we could stay away from, you know, the exact, on radio, it's a little harder to bring that out. But the crux of both of those studies, which are done by a public and a private university here in indiana don't support what the republicans are trying to do as a matter of fact it kind of rips it down in some areas although mitch daniels did dispute that yeah, he disputed it but i had the opportunity to sit down face to face with mitch daniels and i was one of the persons that heard from him the question was asked directly at a building trades meeting that he appeared uh during the last session or uh, that uh it had Two questions were asked specifically, prevailing wage and right to work. And I hear it over and over again, how well this state is doing, how well they've done, how great they are. They're in the top five in the country. And his statement at that time, if it's not broke, why try to fix it? And I'd like to point out, too, and something I haven't heard a lot about, you know, this isn't our first go around with right to work. 1957, the legislature passed right to work. It was in it was a, in law for part of the law for eight years. In 1965, they repealed it. I wasn't involved in politics or, or that, that in, at that point, but I'm sure they didn't repeal it because it was working so well. You know, there's an old adage that if you don't remember your mistakes, you're destined to repeat them. And I feel that falls perfectly. That's a perfect analogy for that adage. We've made that make mistake before. It took us eight years to repeal it. We're talking to Danny Brown. He's a retired union carpenter. He's been very active politically over the years, and, of course, he is my uncle. Um, gosh, there's so much stuff in there. But uh, the issue of Mitch Daniels flip-flopping. Now, he, you're saying that he told you at the Building Trades Council personally. Absolutely. You heard it out of his mouth. Of course, you're not taping it, that it, you know, when it came down to right to work, that he said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. What year was that? I believe that was, it was prior to his uh, uh, re-election, so... 07-ish? Around that point, yeah. 2007. Of course, the the video that is available to everyone is uh, when he talked to the Teamsters Union down in Indianapolis, and that's the one that is going out where he says, you know, I, I'm not going to touch right to work. What do you think about him flip-flopping on this? It's it goes to a, a much bigger and a much bigger issue throughout this country, and that's you know it gets into the 99 percenters versus the one percenters. Money is playing too big a, a role in, in the political system. Uh, 
you know, I've talked to people, uh, legislators, that said that they in the House and in last year, I am confident, last year's session, the votes, if right to work would have came up for the vote, it would not have passed the House. This year, the money is spoken. You know, they've come in, and, and this is what I've heard from legislators, that uh, any Republican that would not support right to work, that uh, the money people would make sure they had a primary candidate, and uh, it was basically threats and coercion. That's, you know, this isn't something, you know, that I'm making up. It's, you know. Uh, it, it's what it's, you're saying that these guys are telling you. Exactly. Telling the, the union folks. Now, let me follow up with that. We're talking to Dan Brown, and I'll take your guys' calls, and I swear in about four minutes, because everyone's trying to call in on this issue right now, okay? But I asked Brian Bosma, and I asked Kevin Brinica. I said, hey, listen, is there some sort of clandestine big business effort to get this passed in Indiana, and both of them categorically said, no, this is a homegrown effort, and, and the kinds of things that you say right now, that you're saying right now, are untrue. What do you have to say to that? I say that that's categorical. Uh, listening to the conversation on the way in, my thought was, you know, I wanted to telepathically have you ask them, yes, I understand Brian Bosma and Mr. Tor authored the bill. I would have asked them, are, is there any money coming from outside sources outside the state? And, and, and the other question, there was one question, I don't remember exactly, but it was along those same lines, when uh, uh, the answer was, I'm not aware of any. Well, that, that for a, uh, you know, that's the, the, next, the next step is I'm taking the fifth. You know, that's right next to taking a fifth. I'm not aware of any because you don't want to be aware of any. It, there's no doubt the Koch brothers, the National Manufacturers Association, there, there's tons and tons of money. The threats against uh, the Republicans to run people in their primaries, that's not in-state money. That's coming from, uh, uh, from, from national interest.